All right, guys, we're gonna do the diodes and bridge rectifier lab. So with this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have an AC source. So we've got our AC source here going into a bridge rectifier. And then from that bridge, we're gonna go across the resistor, which is gonna act as the load. So over here, obviously, from our AC source, we're gonna have a sine wave output. Then after the bridge, we're gonna end up with the full wave DC output across our resistive load. Okay, so let's take a look at this lab and we'll slowly walk through it. So first it says, familiarize yourself and your partner with the equipment to be used in this project. We start in our first lab that the bottom left terminals are a 25 volt AC output. So I have starred this output right here. There's a line that goes to here. The photo is a little bit dark here. So that output is going to be this guy right here. Okay, so we're going to be using this AC output here. For this initial part of the, the lab, we're going to be using these two terminals on line one and line two. We're not going to use the center tap yet. Okay, next thing. Okay, I got my eyes on you. All right, take a look at all these components here. Oh, they're gorgeous. They're all put in nicely and neatly, all in the appropriate spots and hopefully nothing smoked on those boards. All right, so that guy is this right here. So these are all of our components. Okay, you can see that everything's nice and neat. When you're done, put them back in the appropriate place, right? Like, looks like the diodes are gonna go back here. The resistors are gonna go right here, okay? If you end up smoking a component, like if you smoked a diode, then just give it back to me. I'll fix it for next lab. There's two or three different classes that use these components. And it's maddening when somebody puts this back and it's missing components. You're trying to find a component during your lab or some donkey has smoked a diode and they've put it back without telling anybody. If you smoke a component, tell me, we'll fix it. And we'll have it ready for you for next week. Okay. So those guys are all set once we've got them all back in place here. Okay. Next thing, your project board and the power supply. So we're going to put the two side by each. Okay, and this is just to telling you that um, all of these connections right here are jumpered together. So anywhere you see a solid line, they're jumpered together. And these guys are all jumpered together as well. So on the Festo units, we've got two parts. We've got our power supply that's here. We've got our proto board that's here. And now we can see that as soon as I bring the negative to this terminal, I juice up all of these guys with a negative polarity. Okay, over here you can see that the positive is on the top and that is juicing up every one of those terminals along there with the positive voltage. Okay, make sure that when you put the diodes in that you're not shorting them out. Okay, don't put them like this. You'll end up with shorting out your component. Okay, so across here you can see that there's no line. That's a beauty place to put my diode. Now you can use these jumpers here if you want. I've made use of these guys, these jumpers, just to clean up my circuit for the video. You can see that here I needed to jumper these guys together. So we'll put that together. And now we've got a connection between the resistor and this diode right here. Okay, the diodes that we're using are the 1N4007s. Okay, that's a standard bridge rectifier diode. I've given you the cut sheet at the end of the lab there. And the resistor that we're using is a 1 kilo ohm 2 watt resistor. Okay, looks good. I think everything's set up there. Now, if we look at uh, our circuit here, okay, you can see that we're the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create this circuit right here. So we've got two diodes on the top, two in the bottom to create the bridge. Make sure that you have the polarity correct. Okay, you can see here that I have one up, and this one's pointing down. The cathode is here, the anode is here. Okay, so one up, one down, corresponding to one up, one down. Okay, keep the polarity exactly the same, otherwise your bridge isn't going to work. Or you'll end up shorting out your supply. One down, one up. So left hand side is down, right hand side is up. Okay, this left hand side is down, right hand side is up, corresponding to our diagram. Okay, in the center we've got our resistor. And looking at our diagram, this will be A, and this will be B. We're going to see whether which side is positive and which side is negative. Based on this diagram here, and when you redraw it, see if you can figure out which one's negative and which one is going to be positive out of A and B prior to taking those meter readings.
Okay, next thing we need is a, a proper schematic, right? So do it nice and neat. Throw in your bridge rectifier. You've got your AC up to it, done in two different colors. AC going to two terminals. DC coming off the other two terminals. You can see that the two terminals where our loader is connected is right here and here. On the other diagram, we have the resistor in the center. I've just brought these guys out to either side of my resistive load. I've got AC going in and I've got full wave bridge rectification coming out. Okay. Next one, measure the line to line voltage of the 25 volt supply terminals. And we're looking at the two supply lines, not the center tap. So I've got 23.3 volts RMS there. So remember that your multimeter is going to be looking at an RMS voltage. We're going to be looking at an AC voltage. So we'll turn this guy to AC here. Sorry, just slipping a little bit here. Okay, so we got AC voltage and we're going to connect this guy, the positive, to this guy right here. Okay, so the positive of our source. And we're going to connect up the negative Okay, so this terminal right here is going to the negative of our supply. Excellent. Okay, so 23.34 volts. Okay, so what I want you to notice is that I have the circuit hooked up. Watch what happens when I disconnect the circuit. Well, that's funky. The voltage just climbed up to 25 and a half volts. So what's going on? That's our source voltage. If we were to look at the voltage right here, without a load connected on, then we'd see 25 and a half volts. Okay, but as soon as we connect up the load, so I'm connecting this guy up for the bridge circuit, now the voltage drops to 23.4 volts, or 23.3. So use this voltage, connect up the circuit, and then take the voltage. Right? As soon as you connect up a load, oftentimes the source voltage will drop because of the internal resistance of the source. Okay, so we got 23.3 volts. This is an AC voltage. You can see that we're looking at an AC voltage, right? And we're looking at an RMS value. The cat's screaming at me. All right, so we got 23.3 volts RMS. Excellent. Okay, so now we gotta find our peak voltage. Okay, we got 23.3 times 1.414 gives us 32.94 volts as our peak voltage. Peak to peak is just gonna be double that. Did that value match within 10%? Well, for me it did. Okay, so let's take a look. The voltage peak we gotta see with the scope. So now we've got our scope on. Okay, we've already calibrated it. Uh, you're gonna to have to use this lead right here because we're going to have to do the uh, these measurements on the times 10. Sorry guys, just let me focus this in here. Okay, so with this guy we're gonna to have to be on the times 10 position here on our scope lead. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, remove our jumpers here for the, the multimeter. Okay. Okay, so we'll take those guys out so that one meter doesn't affect the other. Okay, so now all we have is just our circuit here. And now we're gonna look at uh, the voltage between the positive and the negative there. Okay, so you can see that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this alligator clip and I'm gonna jam this in here so that it's making contact with the metal. Then I'm going to put it here, right, making contact with the metal again. And then you can see here that I've got that AC waveform coming out. Okay, now um, my calculated peak peak was 32.94 volts. You can see here that I'm on one volt per division, but I'm on the times 10. So each of those solid lines is worth 10. So I have 10, 20, 30, almost 33 volts for my peak voltage. Okay, so it's matching with the voltage that I had as a calculated value. Again, one volt per division, each of those solid lines is worth 10 volts because I'm on the times 10. So I got 10, 20, 30, and just a bit 33 volts as my peak voltage. Okay, so that's matching with uh, my calculated value. Okay, peak to peak is gonna be double that value. Okay, hopefully that worked out for you. Okay, then we're gonna um, do the scope reading of line one to line two. 
Uh, this reading right here I took on two milliseconds. Again, I'm on, oh, let me just go back there, one volt per division, and I'm on the times 10 for the probe. So we can connect it up here, right? So you may want to do this. I just went with uh, two milliseconds, so let me just change this to two milliseconds, and that way I had a full waveform on the screen there. Okay, the peak voltage should not change when you change that time setting. Excellent, so do an appropriate uh, diagram for your scope values for the source, right? On the side here, I've just put in my, time, my 10, 20, and 30, so I can reference that later on. Okay, with the digital meter set to DC volts, uh, measure the voltage across the 1K resistor. Be careful on the polarity, make sure that the positives match on the meter. So prior to doing this, hopefully you have already looked at your circuit and tried to determine whether A, before I gave you the answer here, whether A or B uh, was a positive value. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our leads from the, from the multimeter, okay? Uh, let's just turn this off prior to taking our readings. I'm thinking this is positive, okay? And I'm thinking that this guy is gonna be negative here. Okay, so connected up the meter there, and now we'll turn this guy on. Okay, now this voltage right here isn't matching with my calculations. So what's going on? Well, I know that I have AC on the outside of the circuit, I got DC on the inside of the circuit, so I need to change this to DC volts. Excellent, okay, so there's my DC voltage. I got 19.62 volts DC, okay? So, just depends on time of day. So, I got 19.67 on a previous time that I took that value. Okay, whether A or B is positive. Well, it looks like I've got the red connected up, which is my positive, into B, and I'm seeing a positive voltage on the multimeter. So, B is positive and A is negative. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at those same two points, but with the scope. Okay. So again, we're going to remove these two connections for the multimeter. Okay. Again, when you're taking that multimeter reading, make sure that you're on DC voltage. Okay. Take this guy off of this terminal if it's still sitting there. Okay. Next thing what we're going to do is we need to keep track of the polarity. Well, this was negative, so I'm going to put the alligator clip here. And this guy was positive. Okay, so keeping that same volt, voltage polarity, now we can see the value on the scope. Excellent. There's our uh, bridge rectifier output. You can see those two uh, waveforms. The negative waveform of the, the AC has now jumped up and is now above the x axis. Okay, so that's the diagram that I took. I'm on two milliseconds, one volt per division, and I'm on times 10, right? So it looks like my peak, vo my peak voltage is 10, 20, 30, just over uh, 30 volts there. That's my peak voltage. And that's corresponding to this bridge output. Now, uh, if you don't like that one, if you wanna see um, a few more waveforms, okay, that's the wrong way. Let's go over here to five milliseconds now. Beauty. There you can see that full wave bridge output. Okay, whichever one works for you. I decided to go with this guy because I could see uh, the full waveform there. Okay, again, if you're uh, if it's rocking across the screen there, then use the the trigger in order to set it to to take a, a constant value. There. Okay, so next thing we need to do. Is calculate the average DC voltage. Well, we got 32.94 volts as our peak voltage. We're going across two diodes, so we got to take off 1.4, and then we're going to multiply that by 0.636. So I got 20.05 volts. DC is my calculated value, and I had 19.67 as my measured value. Okay, hopefully your values worked out there as well. Okay, next thing we need to do. Uh, is I've said that oftentimes we have to troubleshoot these circuits, right? So we're going to remove one of the diodes and retake the readings with both the multimeter and the scope. 
Uh, recall that once the diode is removed from the bridge rectifier, we're left with a half wave rectifier. Calculation for expected DC voltage from the half wave re rectifier. So you can see um, here's that previous circuit where we had both of the diodes in there. So we had to take off 1.4 volts and we got 63.6% of our peak voltage or 0.636. Now we only have one diode, so we get 31.8% or 0 0.318 times our V-peak minus 0.7. We only have one diode in that circuit now. So that's 32.94 volts. Peak minus one diode at 0.7 times 0.318 gives me 10.25 volts DC. Uh, with the digital multimeter set to DC volts, measure the voltage across the 1K resistor. Okay, so what we need to do is um, we need to take this guy out of here. We'll take the scope out first. Okay, we're going to take uh, a DC voltage reading again so this was my negative this was my positive here so we're again we're looking at the voltage there okay right now i've got all of the the diodes in there so i'm reading 19.58 volts okay now oftentimes what will happen on a bridge circuit is that if it's set up like this one of the diodes may blow okay so now that guy's out of the circuit and look what just happened to our voltage. We went down to 9.97 volts. Okay, so we are now at a half wave output, right? So the output voltage now is 9.95 volts. Okay, my calculated value was 10.25. Okay, next thing I want you to do is I now want you to take the scope and go across that resistor and see what happens when you have the diode before and when you have the diode afterwards. Okay, now, which way did that diode go in? Let's just make sure I got the, the diode in the right position before we go forward so I don't smoke anything. So that one on the left is supposed to be pointing down. Okay, so this one right here was supposed to be pointing down. Okay, at that point, we can see that our voltage is 19.6. Okay, and then once we lose that diode, then the voltage drops to 9.97. Okay, so let's do the full wave first. There's our full wave. We're going to take out the multimeter here. Okay, get that guy out of there. And now we're going to look at this resistor with the scope. Okay, so again, there's our full wave output. Okay, and watch what happens to the circuit. Let's see if I can get this to sit there. Beauty. Okay, so that's with this diode in the circuit. Once we take this diode out of the circuit, watch what happens. There we go. So all of a sudden, we've lost half of the waveform. That's a lot of power to, to lose. So maybe you're using one of the, the 555 benders. Those guys have a bridge rectifier in there. Maybe the 555 is not working. It's not developing enough power to bend the pipe. Okay? It uses a DC motor in order to move and bend that pipe. Well, if one of those diodes is gone, then you no longer have the voltage output. You no longer have the power output that you had before. Right? This was the output before with the diode. This is without the diode. Okay? So that explains that, re that voltage drop going from the full wave to the half wave output. Okay, so last thing we need to do is just draw in our half wave output here. I decided to go with the five milliseconds, one volt per division, right? Peak voltage still stays the same, but I've lost that negative portion of the waveform there. Excellent, okay. Double check your values with what you guys got in the lab. Uh, and then the next uh, portion, I'm gonna separate this into two videos. So the next portion we're gonna do the positive uh, and negative power source, but we'll stop here.